Welcome back to Water Power Planet and today we're going to cover the catalytic converter. It's a very important piece of the technology. And there's your price tag. I got this one new. I'm going to try to give you a price tag here on the back and give you a, a number so you can find the exact one. I'm going to show you what it looks like here. And this is the catalyst that I use and this has nickel, cerium, copper, iron. These are the other metals that are in here but the ones we're after are the platinum, palladium, and the rhodium. These are the heavy metals that are inside this catalytic converter. So you can see the honeycomb down in there. See I've taken my pen here and I've marked it where I'm going to cut this thing out. I'm going to cut it out in a minute and I'm going to show you how I get this out of here. So I'm going to cut down that edge. I think I can get them out. There's two of them in there. So you get two when you buy one of these. It's very important that you look here on the table of elements, right about here in the middle, you can see where rhodium is, okay? And then you have palladium, and then right below it is platinum, okay? It's right next to gold, 78, that's its atomic number. Uh, this is a very heavy metal. You know, you're getting up in the heavier stuff. It's not light like beryllium or lithium. See, these are lighter metals on the table of elements. This is the heavier stuff. This is more expensive. That's why this thing wasn't cheap. It's got uh, platinum in there. But anyways, I'm going to cut this sucker open I'm going to show you how to do it. But these are some of the tools you're going to need. You're definitely going to need a drill tool. You're going to need the industrial cutoff wheels. Okay. You're going to need a pair of earplugs or a pair of earmuffs. These are the ones I use when I work with hydrogen and HHO. It's very important. And these are my uh, laboratory glasses. So it took quite a few Dremel discs to cut into this. This stainless steel is very tough. You can see I was able to open it up and get inside. You want to remove everything out of here. I'll show you what's in here. So you get two of them. Just a larger one. Okay, and you don't want to damage these. I did the best I could not to damage it. Okay. Here's the other one. So you get two of them. And I'm going to dust those off and clean them up. Okay. These are very precious atoms. These are given to us after a star dies. Okay. These are heavy, heavy metals. These are up there on the table of elements. They come after after iron, you know, in a star, everything forms up to iron and then it smothers itself and then it goes supernova and then that's when you get these heavier elements. So we're going to take everything else and put this away. I'm going to put this outside in the shed and use it for another project. That's what you're going to get. You get two of them. Take a look here on the table of elements. You know, these atoms are right here. There's palladium, there's rhodium, and there's platinum. Okay? You can see all of them right there. These atoms are going to give us the ability to make artificial stars. We're going to be able to make sand heaters. You're going to be able to make thermoelectric power generators. You'll be able to power your starships, main thrusters, and much more using these, these little items right here. So I just got to clean them up a little bit. All right, so the secret to controlling the burn rate of the fuel is to use ambient air, okay? It's for its non-combustible gases. It provides the burn rate adjustment that you need to power and strength to match other fuels. So you can power any motor, any land-based vehicle. You can match gasoline to its exact strength by using ambient air. So ambient air controls the burn rate. So you got to get that hydrogen air mixture just right when you want to run motors, when you want to work with a catalyst, when you want to make flames, you can, you know, adjust it. That's the thing with HHO, it's too clean, too strong, too powerful. Imagine that. And if you've ever seen a fish, I know you all seen a fish, if you look at its gills, that's how it gets the air out of the water. It, it vibrates the water and gets the air like that, okay? It agitates the water and gets the air. It doesn't swim around with the electrolysis tank on the back, you know? He's not swimming around with this big tank on his back to get the oxygen. He just agitates it with his gills and that's how he gets the oxygen. Because water is an absorber of ambient air. And when you guys run your fuel cells, you gotta remember these fuel cells make ambient air. You can't see it when it comes out of the end. You're making hydrogen and oxygen but you're also agitating the water and it's releasing nitrogen. Ambient air is in the water. Water is a huge, huge factor in absorbing ambient air. So you can adjust the burn rate all the way down to 42 centimeters a second. And you can match gasoline or you can just leave it like this where it burns at 325 centimeters a second. 
as HHL. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to heat up this little catalyst right here. Let me heat this up real quick or it won't work. you got to get it hot. And you're going to notice that it's, this is a measurement in Celsius right here. I've taken my voltage meter and I've hooked up my thermoelectric coupling. I wanted to show you guys how fast you can run your thermoelectric generators with this. See, I've just touched that with this flame and it's already going up really quick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ambient air. Okay, let me... Let me add the ambient air and this flame. You'll see it go down. Let me see if I can get, get it here. We can still see it. I'm going to start adding the ambient air now. I'm going to open that valve. And you're going to notice the flame's going to get longer and it's going to go down. Okay. So see, now when I get up here and I go to run the catalyst. Oh, hang on. There it goes. Can you see that? I don't want the flame to light up. I want to be able to heat this without lighting the flame. So I'm adding this ambient air to make the adjustment. I don't want to stick it up here and then bang, the flame comes out. I want to be able to run my thermoelectric coupling and make power. See? This is how you're going to power your Starship your main power generator is going to run just like this. What's cool when you take it away, that cools off really fast and you can touch the end of this. So engineering crews on the plane don't have to worry about, on the ship, don't have to worry about touching any of the parts that are hot because it all happens on the other end where the engine is at. So I hope that helps you understand how that works and how I'm controlling it. Now if I shut that off, once I'll shut the I'll shut the airstream down. Now I don't have all that ambient air going through. Uh oh. See it lights up. It's gonna do that every time. You generate all that power. That's what the lower one's for. Make sure you hold on to that one. So by making adjustments using ambient air, if you had a closed system, it would remain constant all the time because you don't actually burn the ambient air. The nitrogen doesn't burn, okay? So you can make an adjustment all the way down from leaves and paper up to rocket fuel. And that's how you get your catalyst running. That was the secret the whole time. You know, we don't pay anything for ambient air. You can get that for free. You can get it right out of the water if you want. But you have to have a closed system. So you can adjust the flame. You'll see this flame shrink. You can make it any size you want. You can make the air in the system any size you want. So this power source in my hand here can provide limitless amounts of thermal energy. Limitless. Just don't damage it. And it's made of the atoms from supernova from dead stars. Now think about that. That's what this thing's made out of. It's very important. You know, you're going to need a very good power source that's at least, at least going to last you a lifetime. So forever works good enough, I guess. So you're not going to get them stargates open without having some source of energy. You're not going to travel to the stars. Not without a very good power source. You're going to need limitless power. The power of the sun, literally. That's what you're going to need. You're going to need the power of the sun and you're going to need some reactors on board. You know? There's the world surfing. Look at that. So you can see it in the back of that image there. See, the water is the only thing that reaches around the world and touches itself. Eats its own tail. Limitless power. See, there's the water molecule. Just wanted to show you a little bit of this and throw it in there. But to power any ships, any reactors, you're going to need a power source, a ship. You're going to need solar panels. So this is what it looks like from the Pallades star system. When you look back at Earth, we're right there in the hands of the Scorpion. So see, you can clearly see on the ship here the solar panels, the feather representing the solar panels, the power source, the reactor, the dome.
Okay, I'll do the best I can. I don't have a tripod and I'm doing this with one hand. But I want to show you this right here. We're going to create some photons and then turn them into electrons. Okay? Here's the basics of how limelight technology works. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's a low energy nuclear reaction actually. They call it a LENR. That is a candle luminescent reaction. It's, it's the basics of my pulsar electromagnetic wave generator reactor that you've seen in my other videos. I create many different waveforms of light and you can produce enormous amounts of photon energy using this technique. I'm going to go ahead and light this flame here and show you what's going on here, how this works. See I got my voltage meter hooked up to the solar panel here and I have the lights all down so it doesn't make any electricity from the room. And what I'm going to show you here is an endless stream of electrons. Okay, It comes in the form of waves from an ocean of, of energy here. Okay. I'm going to show you how I'm, how I'm getting that out of here. It's coming out as my HHO flame here. And anytime you point this flame at a piece of a limestone, a different rocks, different minerals, it's going to act different every time you point this at something. I have my catalytic converter here that you guys saw me take apart. And I've sawed it in half because I'm going to use it for a lot of different projects. But make sure you see the back half there because that's what's going to power your ship, your starship. You don't want to damage that one. That's for the large reactor. So save that one for the last project. I'm going to show you right here, this is electrons, this is your 21st century fire. It's very important that we make electricity, we have to be able to turn the water directly into electricity. It's very important. I'm going to show you how that's done here. If, let me show you, if you take a look, I'm going to go ahead and point this flame at this piece of uh, platinum I got right here. Here's a piece of the catalytic converter. If you point it at it like this, it's not going to do anything. But if I get point blank range on it, you're going to see what happens. I have to kind of look away to do this. I'm going to try to film the electricity that's created. see that and this is just an example I'm just just showing you how it works see the voltage coming in so I move the flame away this is how my limelight reactor works over here you know we'll get that hooked up and I'll show you how it works later that's another time but right now I'm just showing you the basic science of how I'm creating photons and then turning them into electrons by capturing with the solar panel using the photoelectric effect it's very easy it's a very simple technology make those electrons okay so I hope this video helps you explain some of the science behind the HCAT you know how it works how it can be used you know I was just scratching the surface of what you can actually do with this stuff I mean, it has a million different uses when it comes to making thermoelectric energy and heating things up and igniting the flame so you can do a lot with this simple yet advanced HHO technology I wanted to show you my goggles here and stuff that I was using in this video. Anytime I looked at this, I had these on. I just wanted to show you here. It's always wise to wear your safety equipment when working with uh, such intense light. It's brighter than the sun. Even with this shielding, it's a very powerful emission of ultraviolet and infrared electromagnetic radiation. Like when you look at a poster like this, here's the visible spectrum. I mean, it ranges from right here all the way down to about right here it's a lot it's very powerful just give you one more example of it you see I have to look through the camera so it's very bright it's very bright let's take a look at the warning label right on here and these come with the goggles so anytime you're arc welding working with oxyacetylene you know oxyhydrogen I double this up when I'm looking at that and I don't look at it long so that's my equipment that I'm using. Still bright. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.